Hello my soccer universe, let's do this AFCON review before the second round of matches gets underway. So at least that it's post before that. Uh, if you watch it later, I think it will still be of interest to you, but you probably have to check the results afterwards and I'll do a short video on the results for today anyway. But yeah, the first round of the AFCON was really, really interesting, especially the first set of games. I mean, the, uh, the first six games were really interesting. I made a few upsets, but it uh, it fizzled out a little bit. I also gotta say, but you know, we'll see how it how it does. The FCO needs to needs to develop. At the moment, goals are not uh, really that much forthcoming as we would probably hope for. I think the heat and the humidity have definitely a say in that as well, because you know, for players that are mostly playing in Europe, suddenly going from uh, freezing temperatures to plus 30 and humidity it's probably not that easy and you also have to find yourself because there's not much preparation time either however what we saw already is that we had a few near upsets and we had two relatively big upsets uh, as well so that's typically AFCON. The competition is more even than almost any other tournament and even the big uh, guns are not safe and we're looking at you Nigeria Egypt uh, Cameroon all escaped Algeria also escaped uh, an, an upset and then we had of course the big ones Ghana losing 2-1 to the Cape Verde Islands honestly the way Ghana have been doing did not come as a super surprise but it still is an upset and then of course the big one that um, Tunisia losing to Namibia to Namibia, a team that has never won a game at the AFCON. That is an absolute monster upset and that actually really gets the AFCON going. Two teams that have not had any uh, trouble so far are the holders, Senegal, an easy 3-0 start over the Gambia, which of course is a neighboring duel um, in case you don't know the geography. The Gambia is basically a nation around a river within Senegal, uh, very weird colonialism. And of course, Morocco also in the end did not have really a problem. Those are the two, two biggest wins of the two biggest favorites in the competition so far. Let's jump in and talk a little bit about the games. We we'll look then at the current standings and the expected standings, uh, how things may look going forward. And then at the very end, uh, we we'll look at the rounds uh, that are yet to be played. And it started out last Saturday in the evening, Ivory Coast against Guinea-Bissau or Cote d'Ivoire. I, I personally prefer Cote d'Ivoire, but Ivory Coast rolls a little bit easier off the tongue when you're talking in English. So let's uh, keep, keep it this way. Uh, Fofana scored a really early goal, a brilliant goal. Um, they had some chances to double the lead. However, on the other side, Guinea-Bissau was also uh, at times threatening to score in the end Crasso makes it 2-0 uh, by the 60th minute and Ivory Coast get off to a really good, good start and I have to say I loved the colors in the stadium I mean a beautifully big stadium all star you know with a running track and, and, and so on but this is the AFCON for me because it reminds me of tournaments from the past I mean uh, it has a feel like of um, almost Mexico 86 or something like that. There's a two or two tournaments that would have been held uh, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, this kind of vintage feel is really, really cool. And then you see modern players down there. Uh, then the first near upset with Nigeria. I mean, Ecuador and Guinea have been a quantity in Africa. It has, has, has to say, but still, Nigeria tried to score goals and uh, Nigeria have an absolute amazing front line. Uh, what they have on the front, they're definitely lacking in the back. And Salvador in the 36th minute uh, had a big chance, uh, took the lead for Ecuador Aguilar almost immediately. Ademola Lukman sets up uh, Victor Osimen, who gets the equalizer. Uh, and from that moment on, I actually thought there will be only one winner in Nigeria. Um, and they had the chance. Osimen clear on goal. Misses the target, that was the chance. Uh, they probably should, should, should have gotten something out of it. However, you know, at least the point you're not losing to start the tournament. Uh, which is probably also what Egypt has to say. A very similar start to the, the Ivory Coast. Early goal, uh, Mustafa Mohammed after being set up by uh, Salah in the second minute. And I thought that they are cruising. I mean, they had a few more chances. Uh, and Mozambique didn't offer much of a resistance. Uh, then I went to have uh, dinner. 
And when I came back, I saw Mozambique in a 2 1 lead. They turned it around within a couple of minutes. Uh, Witt in the 55th and Bock uh, in the 58th. Absolute. If you see the first time, absolute out of nowhere. And then Egypt were really hard uh, trying to get something going. Mamush came, 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 came on uh, for Therese, Gade, and uh, Kamal, Ashur, and, and, and so on. And in the end, it's a very, very soft penalty. I can see why it's given. I can see why it's given. Oh, it was a very soft penalty. And Salah converts it really late. Late, late on. It was even more annoying that um, after the penalty, there was more stoppage time to, 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 to play to, uh, the channel uh, that I was watching. Also, the rights for the Super Copa. And then they cut off that and uh, went to the Super Copa of Spain which is a tournament I don't want to have anything to do with. So this was uh, Egypt avoiding the upset, but as, as, as we will see, uh, still a little bit in trouble at, at the moment. And then Ghana uh, completely pooped the bed. Uh, Montero gave the Cape Verde Islands in the 17th minute a lead. A goal was, uh, by Ajimero was uh, disallowed. Then Ghana gets the equalizer, but in pushing forward and trying to maybe get the win, they concede through Rodriguez in the 91st minute. The Cape Verde Islands pulled the upset. As I said, um, Ghana is not a good team at the moment within Africa, so it doesn't come as a super surprise. But still, uh, you would expect more from this Ghana team. Losing 2-1 to the Cape, Cape Verde Islands, and we'll see they are now in control of this group. Senegal, absolutely no problem. Uh, Papke. Again, an early goal set up a Sadio Mane, so another former Liverpool striker. Uh, it's actually the assist givers. The Ivory Coast was for Frank Kessie. Then we had uh, Mohamed Salah for uh, Eid, Eid ibn Sadio Mane for Papke. Um, and Senegal, without exerting themselves really in the driving seat, uh, it, they were also, also set by a red card for Adams. Um, I think this was one, a, a VAR card. Uh, and then, you know, with 10 men. The Gambia have not much to offer. Kamara scores then a double uh, and Senegal are off to a good start. As we would we expect, and if you recall the last AFCON that they had won, they, had a, they were not brilliant, but they got going the, long, the longer the tournament went. And I would expect something very similar here. Cameroon on the, on the other side, yes, Onana did not play, which was one of the big stories coming up to it. Uh, um, really did not look good, especially in the first, first half again. It uh, was a game where around my dinner time. So I saw the first half and I thought that Guinea uh, are really good for the money. Bayo gave, gave them an early lead after Cameron already had cleared it. Uh, however, it turned right before they have, and that was the red card that was reviewed by when Kamano got sent off uh, for a rough tackle. Um, and then, yeah, Magritte gets an Equalizer for Camp Cameroon, but honestly, too little tool uh, coming from them. Yes, they had one good chance to maybe get the winner, but overall, I think Guinea was very much deserving. That draw and Cameroon is probably also one of those teams that may not go really far. Algeria, uh, yes, they want to bounce back. They were uh, had they suffered this huge upset at the last. Uh, the last tournament where they were the huge favorites and left last in the group, so were eliminated in the first round. Bunaja, the winning goal scorer from the AFCON in Egypt, gives them the lead. However, they cannot double it, cannot add on. And then uh, Mabulu, Mabululu, <laughs> that's a cool name, Mabululu. Uh, penalty gives Angola the point. Angola have a really nice jerseys, I have, have to say, which are also relatively cheap to get. So another upset kind of uh, there. And it's also the theme that, you know, northern teams are usually the big giant in Af Africa as well as East African teams. Uh, so it's not an East Af Africa, but we see that the Southern African teams are really giving everyone a run for, for their money. Burkina Faso also escaped, um, you know, draw turn points to lowly Mauritania by scoring a very, very late uh, penalty through Traore. But at least they get the win because Tunisia, while having chances, Namibia, who had never, never won a game at the AFCON. I think it's only a second or third appearance at, at the F F F F F to boot gave uh, Tunisia a real run for the money. And in the end, uh, they even snatched the winner through Hotto in the 88th minute. 
major, major, major upset. And Tunisia are looking at a rougher path in the tournament at, at the moment because winning this group will, might not come that easy. Especially since Mali, yes, they also were struggling against South Africa, the most southern team uh, in Africa, of course. Uh, South Africa had a penalty, the Percy Tau missed, and then it was only in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the second half, 60th and 66th, that Mali, again, brilliant jerseys, but you know, not as brilliant as this one here, but Mali always have brilliant jerseys. Traore and Sinayoko scored and to go on 60th and 66th, and Mali are off to a good start. We have to see where this will go. And then yesterday, Morocco um, east to a 3 0 win over Tanzania. Yes, it was not brilliant, but uh, the question with Morocco is you know, at the World Cup they had this counter attacking um, tactics. Now uh, they are the favorites, so they can re no, not really use it. But against Tanzania, it was not really a problem. Roman says the 30th minute gets the goal and then Unahi and, and Nesir in the 77th and 80th make it a proper goal and before that Miroshi was sent off with a second yellow card so that also helps to opening up, up the space but I never felt that Morocco are in danger even though it was not always pretty looking and then uh, the last game was the DRC against Zambia uh, Zambia had the lead but Vissa quickly equalized was, both goals came in the first half uh, and it ends in a 1-1 one, one draw so after all this, let's look at the uh, sta standings and the, especially the expected standings. So in Group A, we have Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, and Guinea Bot Basso, which is exactly how we would expect it to end uh, with a Cote Cote d'Ivoire. I've recall, you see, I'm using it interchangeably, uh, being of course the favorites there. Um, in Group B, the Cape Verde Islands are top and they are also expected to finish top. Uh, Ghana probably should peep Mozambique, but the way Ghana have been doing, uh, not much that you would, uh, that would not be a huge surprise. Let, 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 let's put it that way. Ghana's chances of advancing are down to 52%, so basically a coin flip at this point. Senegal ahead of Cameroon, ahead of Guinea, sounds about right, but I don't know what to expect from Cameroon to, to be honest. They should make it out of, out of this group though. Uh, in Group B, we have now Burkina Faso in control ahead of Algeria and Angola. So uh, we'll come down. I, I really hope that Algeria, because they have such great players in, in there, that Algeria hit the next uh, level. On the other side, I wouldn't mind if Ismail Ban Benazir returns to Milan. So that is also a facet I have to look uh, into. Mali are now in control of their group and Namibia are even expected to head of Tunisia. Uh, Tunisia also only 64% chance of advancing so far, so not looking really good for them. And then Morocco are uh, very much the favorite to advance for their group. Then DRC and Zambia, the draw I think is probably uh, reflective of that. Third place team look more on the uh, expected side. Um, Tunisia and Gold, Equatorial Guinea and Zambia. We saw already a few changes in the table and that also means with the expected bracket looks now completely different than from before. Uh, it's actually quite amazing. Uh, funnily enough, Tunisia is now an expected third place team. They will play Burkina Faso where they are the favorites. Uh, as is Cameroon over Nigeria, which actually would spill Tunisia all the way to a third place uh, playoff. Which is pretty uh, amazing because before that they were all in a quarterfinal. But you know, better position, you get a slightly easier path because Nigeria and Cameroon are lower rated than Tunisia, but they would run into Morocco, of course. Um, we see also that uh, Egypt is now in second place, would run into the Cote d'Ivoire, or I, 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 Ivory Coast. What does not change is, is of course, we still have the Morocco Senegal final. The two are very well separated. Um, and I think even the Cote d'Ivoire have a good uh, path to the semi final, although Egypt is probably a tougher opponent than they would like to have. And I, Mali, Algeria at the moment, Algeria would be a favorite there. Again, there is a disadvantage, I think, for Northern African team if the Afghan is played south of the Sahara. That's uh, all that I'm going to say uh, to that. As for the overall favorites, we see Morocco ahead of Senegal and then the Cote d'Ivoire, Algeria, Egypt, Tunisia uh, for now. But you see already the chances for Algeria advancing are, are okay. Tunisia already look iffy, so Tunisia uh, might could fall even further. Um, but yeah, Morocco, big favorite. Senegal run into the hosts as uh, as is on the branch, and that's why they are not as highly favored. Morocco is the highly, most highly rated team in the competition. Um, then 
upcoming games and we have already a big one today and it's unfortunately again the dinner time and we'll have to discuss this with family that i want to watch the ivory coast play nigeria that is an absolute <laughs> that's a really really great game i expect there uh at least from home names and egypt against ghana also doesn't sound shabby at all we have a, quite a few games then uh we have senegal against cameroon also quite a good game I gotta say, uh, that will tell t uh, that will tell us a whole lot. Although I would expect Senegal to win this rel with relative ease. Algeria against Burkina Faso um, might be a big one. Tunisia Mali also a big one. And there's this little matter of South Africa against Namibia, neighboring duel where South Africa is actually the bigger nation, but Namibia got the big upset. So I think this will be a really really interesting round. And don't discount Morocco against the DRC as well. So I think there are quite a few uh, games, must watch this almost, if you're a fan of the AFCON. Any case, that's it from me. Please let me know what you thought about the AFCON so far. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this uh, video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.